Biofilms exist in almost every type of environment on Earth. They are a frequent complication of implanted medical devices and have a financial impact of hundreds of billions of dollars a year. From urinary catheters to pacemakers and from prosthetic joints to tracheostomy tubes, biofilms affect millions of people every year. Within a biofilm, bacteria are more resistant to antibiotics and disinfectants. When compared to free-floating bacteria, those growing in a biofilm can be up to 1,500 times more resistant to antibiotics and other chemical agents. A biofilm forms when one cell or a few cells attach to a surface. These first cells produce proteins which act as signals to nearby cells. The signals are detected by neighboring cells and recruit new cells to the surface. This collection of cells is called a colony. As the nearby cells detect the chemical cues, they aggregate and begin to form a biofilm. These cells then send out additional signals, recruiting more cells to the colony and growing the biofilm. The chemicals produced by the cells also signal the development of polysaccharides, which form a slime layer. The slime layer forms around the growing colony. The slime consists of many layers with channels which allow the cells in the center of the colony to receive nutrients and remove waste products. The slime layer also prevents penetration of the biofilm by the immune system or antibiotics. Thus, biofilms are difficult to remove and pose risk to human health. Biofilms can also pit the surface it is attached to. This can cause damage to the medical device and may cause the medical device to fail. As it relates specifically to cuffs on tracheostomy tubes and endotracheal tubes, biofilms can eat holes in the cuff and cause the cuff to fail. Most manufacturers of tracheostomy tubes suggest changing a tracheostomy tube at least once a month. There are many reasons for this, but one of them is preventing biofilm-associated infections. Biofilms take time to form. On average, it takes about 30 days for a biofilm to organize and grow to a significant size on a tracheostomy tube. After 30 days, the risk of developing a biofilm-associated infection greatly increases. If a tracheostomy tube is changed once a month, there is a lower likelihood a biofilm will cause an infection. Recently, someone contacted me and told me he changes his plastic tracheostomy tube once every seven months because he did not see the need to change it more frequently. When I tried to explain bacteria can adhere to the tracheostomy tube, form a biofilm, and cause antibiotic-resistant infections. The person told me he removes his tracheostomy tube frequently and cleans it with a Q-tip. I tried explaining how biofilms are very sticky substances which are extremely hard to remove. They live in tiny crevices in the plastic and will not be killed by simply using a Q-tip. The person needs to change his tracheostomy tube at least every three months but preferably once every month to prevent the possible complications from biofilms. The person was extremely reluctant to change his tracheostomy tube so frequently. He told me, I have never been sick before. Biofilms do not seem to affect me. Since our conversation, the person has been extremely sick several times with severe respiratory infections. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.